Hello, eager learners. Hopefully you're having a fabulous fall day. Uh, in this video, we are going to talk a little bit about MLA format as we're heading into our first draft of our Project 1 essay. Uh, all the stuff we're going to talk about is in the Modules tab, so if you click on that and go down to the MLA format uh, folder, and grammar, all our fun grammar stuff is in here, uh, but you'll also see a lot of really good MLA stuff. So if you click on the sample MLA paper, this is what you are going to want to model your essay on. So you're going to see that you've got one inch margins all around the document. The whole document is double spaced and it is in Times New Roman font. Please do not pick any other font, just Times New Roman, 12 point size, double spaced. Uh, you'll have some special information on the first page. This will only appear on the first page. Very common mistake, people put this on all the pages. Don't do that. Bad idea. Just put it on the first page. So it'll be your name, the instructor, the class, and the date. And I would like us to note that the date is written weird. At least it's weird for US American students because in many other countries around the world, the day goes first and then the month and then the year. We do ours different because like we do everything different. Uh, we use feet instead of yards, meters, and stuff. So like we do our own silly thing for a lot of different items. Um, we also do it in how we write our date. So we are going to write this in a um, more standard European style with the day first and then the month and then the year. Uh, you'll also note that you've got a running header here with your last name and the page number. This should be the same font as the rest of the document. So it needs to be Times New Roman 12 point font um, and the pages should be automatic pagination, which means they are going to number themselves for you. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Uh, then you're going to have a title. The title should always be centered. It is the exact same size as the rest of the essay, the exact same font. Everything's the same. Don't bold it. Don't italicize. Don't underline none of that. This is just how it's supposed to look. Go ahead and capitalize that title. That's the only special treatment it gets. It's centered and it's capitalized. Everything else is the same as the rest of the document. Then you're going to begin your paragraphs with a half inch indentation on the first line. So that's just one tab space if you're using a standard tab. And you're going to go ahead and write and write and write. And then when you're ready to do a new paragraph, once again, you uh, indent those first paragraphs. Um, yay, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And if we scroll all the way down through this tremendously long paper, yours doesn't have to be so long, um, you are going to see a works cited page. Uh, works cited page is a completely separate page. Um, so if your essay ends on a half page like this, you don't put the works cited immediately following. You um, insert a page break and you begin the works cited on its own page. Works cited is the title. This should be plural because you're using more than one work. And then you're going to create your citations. These should all be in MLA style. They should be alphabetized by the author's last name. Um, and they need to have this hanging indent. So the first line of the citation comes all the way out to the margins and the other ones stay indented that half tab space. Um, and that in a nutshell is MLA format for your uh, document. So if you were writing your essay in MLA format, which you're going to be doing, um, it might look something like this. You've got your student name, you've got the class, or you've got me, you've got the class, you've got the date, you have an interesting title. Remember, you need an interesting title, not just project one, uh, because this is another chance for us to engage our readers' attention. And then we start with our introductory paragraph. We've got a hook, we give some context for the book and for the ideas, and then we deliver a thesis statement that gives context for the novel as well as acknowledging the complexity of the issues we're dealing with and then making a clear statement that says the character's actions were either motivated by revenge or justice. Remember, both of those answers can be absolutely correct. It just depends on how well you support it. Um, you'll see that the beginning of the paragraph is indented. This is all Times New Roman, 12 point font, double spaced. Everything's working as it should here. Uh, if you are struggling with indenting or uh, with inserting the page number, my easy way to do this is to go to the insert tab, click on page number, and then click you want it on the top of the page. You want it right aligned. That's going to automatically do the numbers for you. And then you just type in your last name here. You will have to manually change the um, 
font and size here because its defaults are incorrect. So you'll just do last name and page number there. That'll get that all set up for you. Then when you've written your entire essay and you're ready to do the work cited, you'll come to the next empty line. You'll click insert page break. That will get you a brand new page. The pagination will still be working there. Then you'll go to the home page, hit center, and do works cited because you'll have more than one work. And then go back out to your regular margin. You do need two sources for this essay. I'm going to show you real quickly a cheat on how to get citations uh, pretty quickly done. So if you go to the Night Cite website, which is in our file folder, um, make sure you're on MLA format. And we are going to be citing a book. So you'll click on Basic Book. Um, and then you can either get your paper copy of the book or you can go into Amazon and find the copy of the book that you bought and scroll down to the bottom where it has product details. This will be the easiest way to create your citation uh, because if you just do a little side-by-side -side windows, you will be able to see that everything you need to fill in these little boxes is in this handy dandy little information window. So if we are citing Murder on the Orient Express, we've got an author. There's just one author. The author's name is Agatha. I don't know her middle name. Christy. Uh, the book title is Murder on the Orient Express. You can tell I've typed that before here. Uh, and then we'll look in here and see we don't have an edition number, so that's fine. Uh, there's not multiple volumes, so we don't need that. It's published by William Morrow Paperbacks. You'll see that up here under Publisher. Uh, we do want to include the city of publishing, uh, which we will look down here and find. We won't find it, so we'll take that away. If it is listed, go ahead and put it in there. A uh, year published. This was published in 2003. Obviously, it was a republishing, not the original one. Uh, if you have the original one, kudos. It's probably worth a lot of money. Uh, does the resource have pagination? Yes, it does, but we're not going to include it. This is print. We hit submit. Ta-da! There you go. You'll just copy that bad boy into your Word document. And then, of course, you'll have to do a little bit of formatting. We do want that to be Times New Roman. We want it to be a 12-point font. Um, and there you go. That's how you do it. Pretty exciting. If this were to go on to a second line, because it had more information, and you needed to have that hanging indent, you're going to put your cursor on the front of the second line. You're going to go up to your little ruler here and just grab the bottom triangle, not the whole thing, not the box, just the bottom triangle. So this is a chance to test your uh, fine motor skills. Uh, and you're going to just pull it over half inch. So then you've got your hanging indentation just like that. And that's how you do it. MLA format in a nutshell. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, so if you have any questions about that, reach out. I'm here to help. But this is how your essay should look when you submit it. This week, you are going to be submitting your essay to uh, a discussion board where you get to um, do some peer review. Uh, we're shooting for at least four full paragraphs. We are going to do two rounds of peer review on this. Uh, which is, of course, very exciting. Um, but I do want to make sure that we've got enough to get really good feedback on in this first round. So I want at least four well-constructed full paragraphs using sources and citations with the essay and MLA format so you can get really good feedback. You are going to be posting your um, very excellent essay, and then you are going to be responding to the person who posts it directly below you. So make sure that you are um, posting and then checking back because you are going to read the person's essay who posts directly below you. And you are going to give them some feedback using a guide sheet that I've got for you in the discussion board. So um, reach out with any questions on that. But I'm excited to, first of all, see what you create in your essays. I'll be responding to your thesis statements. Uh, today and tomorrow is the plan, so you'll have that feedback as you um, get those ready for peer review. And then um, get those essays done, upload them for peer review, get that feedback, and then over the weekend you're going to be making changes, making them even stronger. And then you're going to bring those essays to class on Monday. 
those revised amazing essays, they should be fully written by Monday, and we're going to be working on them in class. So do bring your very excellent essays to class on Monday, um, and we'll have lots of fun checking our MLA format, checking our grammar, and checking our content organization and ideas. Good times will be had by all. So have fun writing, guys. Make sure you're following that MLA format guide, and let me know if you have any questions.